Hey everyone, Nubkex here, and welcome back to Nub Raids. And today's video is a bit of a hot take video. Bit of a hot take. I was going through my comments recently from one of the videos I'm most proud on, actually, from the last last while, which was a counter uh, counterattack team for Nightmare Hydra. Uh, with obviously had Oella as really the star of the show, the recent fusion uh, that, in my opinion, was super underrated. But I did see this comment from Yami Sukihiro. I probably said that wrong. I tried. This is why I don't listen to CCs when they say a fusion is trash. Not a single CC said to go for Oella. And then about a million uh, ellipses, I think it is. Uh, so I, I think, uh, to be fair, I did say, I think, okay, I'm not actually sure what other CC said. And to be honest, I'm not out to get the other CCs. Um, I, I think that's silly, but it's something that I have noticed instead is that it's not really just the content creators. It's really the community as a whole and the sort of community perception of what is good that can be really determining and and and, and making some things go. Like, for, for example, with Supreme El Hain, I think was also a really underrated fusion. Uh, but for example, Hell Hades, literally the biggest content creator in the game, was saying, hey, Supreme El Hain, she smacks. She's actually pretty good. I'd like to go for her. Uh, but still, all of the community is saying, no, she sucks, she sucks, she sucks. So I actually, that's what I want to do in this video, is to actually look at some of that and to break it down. So let's do it. We're diving in to a beautiful spreadsheet, as I like to do. And what I want to do is basically to review the community perception of these champions. So this is sort of, you know, and definitely my bias is going to come into this a little bit. So feel free if you think that I've made a mistake here. I mean, let me know in the comments for sure. I don't mind, right? Um... But basically, I'm going to rank them from basically good, decent, or bad, right? So either the community feels like this champion is god tier, that they suck, okay? that they're, you know, they're pretty decent, they're all right, and so on. And then we're going to, I'm going to give you my rating now, how good I think the champion is as of like today. If I was to rank them today, how worthwhile was this fusion to do? And then we'll talk about whether the community overrated them whether they fairly rated them or underrated them and i'll give you a bit of my thoughts as well and where i might have like underrated or overrated a specific uh, uh champion but we'll do that too as we go so let's dive in uh first of all again i just mentioned her but the community when it came to supreme alhane when it came to oella i think both of those it was very much a reaction of these champions suck these fusions suck what's the point in doing them i think that's really wrong i even see that i think that that's sort of the vibe with razzle vark as well it's a very negative vibe of like what's the point of this champion now, i don't know if you guys feel that as much i feel like the razzle vark one it's been a bit more of a debate where you've got even a bunch of content creators like again hell hades like deadwood jedi saying hey this champion is badass they're awesome um but i still feel like the community as a whole is is quite negative about them um, and I do generally think that's a mistake. In fact, let's throw in Pytheon here as well. Obviously not a they suck. Pytheon was really called out as god tier. If I was to rate them now, the way I would rate them now, um, let me actually grab all, uh, let me grab all of this and let me just center it. There we go. So we can see rating. I'll make this look prettier after. If I was to rate them now out of 10 as to how worthwhile I think these champions are as fusions, I would actually give Ralsevark an eight out of 10. I think with his increased speed, increased accuracy, with his, his damage actually scaling very well with both speed and attack. Um, and yeah, and, and just that passive, I think he's an 8 out of 10. I think Supreme Alhain, likewise, an 8 out of 10 champion. I think is a void nuker that can absolutely destroy Necret teams in Arena. I think she's fantastic. She's a great nuker. Um, I've been using her a bunch. Oella, I'm actually going to rank, rank even higher. I'm giving Oella a 9 out of 10, guys. I am doing it. And then for Pytheon... I'd be giving him a 10 out of 10. I do think that Python is a 10 out of 10 fusion champion. I mean, he's got some weaknesses, of course, as a champion, but, you know, as a tanky reviver, a cleanser, I think he's absolutely worth going for. I think Oella, as by far the best increased resistance champion in the game, one of the best buff extenders in the game, bringing tons of healing and turn meter boosting, I think absolutely radically underrated. I think she's a 9 out of 10 fusion, honestly, looking at it now. So in terms of how I'd rate these, honestly, we've got three right here. The last three fusions, I think, that community perception has really underrated all of them. Actually, substantially. I think all of these are very underrated. Obviously, the Razzlevark one is not with the benefit of hindsight as much as this stuff is. I honestly think with Oella, um, I think with Supreme Elhane, like her, her value is fairly obvious, to be honest. It doesn't take too much to work that out. I think with Oella, really building Oella-type teams does take a lot of work and effort. 
Um, so yeah, and then I think that Pythion was fairly rated. I think he's considered to be god tier. I think he is god tier. I think that's fair. Jumping over then uh, to the next few. So Nishak, I, I think overall people did sort of consider Nishak god tier. Maybe he's considered a bit decent, um, but I, I I think the perception of Nishak was, you know, particularly for dungeons, you know, Bommel even, a lot of that stuff that he would be really, really good. So that was that was cool. Margain and Moranix, I clearly remember both of those being told that they suck. These champions are bad. What is the point? Uko, really no question, definitely was considered god tier alongside Pythion as well. No question there. Lanathoril uh, was considered to suck. Uh, I was like, this is the only fusion that I've actually skipped was Lanathoril. So I was definitely part of the they suck t uh, camp. I'll give you a small uh, preview here. I do think Lanathoril is actually a bit underrated. Like he's not an amazing champion by any means, but uh, probably kind of worth getting as just an ally attack champion that brings in everyone to ally attack. That's actually kind of cool and kind of unique. Um, and some, somewhat useful for the new Fire Knight, for example. Um, the first sort of decent champion, I think, was Walking Tomb Drang. I think he was considered to be, you know, a great champion, really solid. Uh, and I think, well, again, spoiler warning, I think that he turned out to be a really, really solid champion. Helicath was obviously considered to be god tier with that block damage. Uh, I'm double checking my notes to make sure I do this right. Bibbled of the Thorn, I think Gaius the Gleeful were both considered to be decent, um, both like good champions, uh, but nothing crazy. I think this is, generally speaking, I'll give you my opinion now, that decent is sort of the point where fusion should be mostly aiming for. Most fusions, you would think, should be decent. This should be the color that we're seeing most is yellow, of being like, hey, they're pretty good, right? They're actually quite good. Um, for a lot of people, they might be great, but, you, you know, not necessarily for everyone. Um, Nari the Lucky, Parato and Operden. Again, I sincere, uh, clearly remember all of these uh very negative. Nari the Lucky being like, what's the point of this decrease accuracy, decrease resistance, just build enough accuracy. Stupid. Karato. Uh, people really, really hate Karato. Operden as well. Oh, he's just a healer. What's the point? This guy sucks. What do I think of them now? Um, let me give you my ratings on these champions now. So Nishak, I would give a 9 out of 10, I think, as a fusion. I think he's great. I think he's actually great at the moment in live arena as a force of any bomber that can reduce the bombs to one turn. Great for like Dragon. Uh, even pretty good for Ice Golem, a lot of Doom Tower stuff. I think he's just a really good champion. Uh, I think he's great. And I think, honestly, that it's a fair rating. I do think that he's god tier. For me, god tier are like 9 or 10 out of out of 10s, right? 9 or 10 out of 10 is a god tier fusion. It's like, you really, really want to do this fusion. Do not skip it. Um, decent ones are like, you should really try to do it, but you could skip it if you have to. And then, you know, a they suck fusion is like, yeah, you can probably not bother. It's not really going to affect you. Margain, in my opinion, I'd be giving her probably about a 7 out of 10. I think she's actually like a good champion. She's solid. She's decent. Uh, she does some cool stuff, but she's not absolutely mandatory. Moranix, I'd probably give a 6 out of 10. I was actually curious about this. I, uh, I You know, I was, I've started using the Hell Hades Optimizer. I'm going to do some videos on it soon, but I have started using it. I never used it before. I have started. I thought this was fun. So what I've done here um, is uh, basically I've gone into uh, Spider. Stage 10 hard, which is the current hardest stage of Spider in the game. I set it to 100% success rate teams only with at least 20 battles done. And for this is scanning my account for the champions that I own. This is the team that I made. It's the second best team. There is one team that's better, which is, is, is kind of more budget, more accessible, to be fair. Does it one second faster as well. But I thought this was crazy that there's actually 978 battles. Oh, I clicked into it by accident. Uh, oh, no, I've, I've really ruined things now. Uh, yeah, find a team. Yes. 100% success rate, please. 16 battles. That's fine. Apply filter. There we go. Yeah. This team has turned out to be super popular, which is actually really cool. Uh, and then there's a bunch of other teams. Like, this team has run a bunch as well with the Battle Sage and uh, Kaimar to reset uh, and so on. So I think that's fun. There's actually a Noella team in there, which is nuts. I don't know what's going on with that one. That's very odd. Who's replacing... Oh, replacing Battle Sage. Oh, I guess it's to um, give you enough resistance so you don't get slept, perhaps? I think that's really interesting. It's got a bunch of battles as well, like a Wella. Who knew? How cool, right? I think that's really, really fun. So, uh, yeah, I thought that was just a fun fact to throw in there. Uh, anyway, Moranix, I give her a six, right? I think decreased defense and hex AOE is a cool thing. So I think she's, you know, she's she's okay. She's nothing crazy, though, but that's a unique skill that that makes her kind of valuable there. And for me, Uko is a 10, really no question. Lanathoril, um, I was debating, I give Lanathoril still probably a five. 
Like, I don't think he totally sucks. I don't think he's totally amazing. But look, that ally attack is actually pretty cool. There's not that many ally attack champs in the game. And for something like Fire Knight Hard, comes in with a shield with an ally attack. It's not bad, right? Not bad. Tomb Drang, I'd be giving probably an 8 out of 10. Overall, great champion. Brilliant for Ice Golem. Arguably, you could put him as a 9. You know, I wouldn't mind if you put him as a 9. But I think Tomb Drang is really, really solid. Uh, so I've, I've, I've said he's decent. Helicath, um, again, I'd be giving Helicath probably, I think I gave him a 9. Yeah, I'm rating Helicath as like a 9. Could be a 10. He's definitely god tier anyway with that block damage stuff. Not as useful late game, right? Not as useful, but still like block damage for two turns on a four turn cooldown is super good. And he's got a great shield. I think he's a great champ. Uh, Bivold and Gaius, I give them both 8s out of 10. Um, Bivold, just good damage actually. Tons of healing for your team. Great provoker. Brilliant champ. Gaius, same thing, you know, puts out bombs. The bombs do a lot of damage. He's got a cool blow up the bombs, ignore unkillable on his A3 as well. Gaius, he's a solid champ. Not as not on the level of like Uko or, you know, Pythia on that sort of stuff, but uh, just a tiny bit below. I think he's great. Nari the Lucky, I think is actually criminally underrated. I give him probably a seven overall. I might up this score though. Nari the Lucky is a champion, I'll tell you right now, who is on my watch list of champs to watch. I think the only person I've ever seen like hyped for Nari the Lucky is YST. I think he's been basically on his own, and I think that he is right. So stay tuned for that. This is a score I could absolutely increase. Karato Fox Hunter isn't great, to be fair. He's a 5 out of 10, in my opinion. He's much stronger with Yumiko, but not so strong, I think, that you really mind. Like... Yeah, I, th I think he's fairly average. Now, the thing about Karato, he does hit really hard, really hard. He's got a cool passive that ignores enemy passives that reduce damage. So against Duchess, he ignores that damage reduction. Pythion, he ignores that damage reduction. I think still he's probably a 5 out of 10. He just does damage, but he does really good damage thanks to that passive. So I think he's, you know, kind of middle of the road there. He could be really useful for your account. He could be totally useless if you got tons of other nukers. Uh, his combo with, with uh, Yumiko is not crazy strong but it's very good um so yeah i think he's five out of ten and then operden uh operden's a bit tricky to rate i'd probably give him about a six i think he does tons of healing and turn meter boosting i think it's it's kind of solid enough um right so there we go all right in terms of how how were these rated and whatnot let me see so uh i think that nishak was fairly rated I think that Morgane and Moranix were both underrated champions. Very much so underrated. They definitely do not suck. These champions both have a use. Morgane, I think more so than Moranix, to be fair. Uh, but yeah, Mighty Uko, I think fairly rated. Definitely god tier. Same thing with Helicath. Helicath, definitely god tier. Uh, Lanatharil, definitely underrated, in my opinion. Uh, and underrated by me. I include myself in the criticism there. For sure, I definitely underrated Lanathril. It was a nasty f uh, fusion, but still, I did underrate it. Uh, Bivold and Gaius, I think, were fairly rated. They're both decent champs. They're both very, very solid, great champs. And then I do think these final three, clearly, were very underrated as well. Again, I think Nari has the potential to be really good. I think that both Karato and Operden are like, they're all right. No, they're decent, but they're nothing absolutely crazy. But they definitely don't suck. They're not useless. It's not like, oh, definitely skip this fusion. It's terrible. No, far from it. Far from it. Uh, and then we come to these last ones. What I've done here, guys, is I've only gone back as far as uh, December and October. This is when I basically started playing. So I just I wasn't around for the previous fusions. I don't know what the community perception was. I can only talk about the ones that I was here for. Um, so Totora Rhymehide, I remembered people being super hyped about Totora, that this champion is amazing. Um, and then we had a whole bunch that sucked. Vlad the Nightborn, this champion sucks. Not doesn't deserve to be void. Sigmund the High Shield, this one is ridiculous that people were saying that this champion sucks. Sigmund is so good. It's not even funny. Rorik, Wormbane, they suck. Mother Cybele, that they sucked. Versulf sucked. I don't quite remember Herndig, to be honest. I think that he was um, considered to be decent. Maybe he was considered to be god tier. Like, I do remember people considering skipping Herndig and stuff. I don't quite remember, to be honest. I'm, I'm putting him in his deep. Maybe he was god tier. I don't know. Uh, and then Rule the Huntmaster, I think, was pretty negatively received, again, because of Hex, and was considered to suck, maybe a little bit. Brogni was definitely considered to be god tier. I remember Yoshi was considered to suck. You know that he's one of my favorites. I'm going to be putting him as underrated. And then I definitely remember both Astralon and Iron Brago being considered to be god tier. Um, yeah, both of these champions were people were super hyped about both of them. They love both of them. Uh, and yeah, 
I can also mention here, let's, let's do the previous year. What's that, 2021 as well? Hixing and Elagias were both considered to suck, to suck. How would I rate these champs now? What do I think about them? So, Tatora, in my opinion, probably an 8 out of 10 champion. Uh, I actually, I was going to put him a 7 out of 10, to be honest, but I'm going to go back and revise that uh, that ranking. Um, I, I did knock him from 7 up to 8 for me overall. Um, I... The reason being, I did a bit of Totora stuff, you know, because he puts out AoE Perfect Veil for your team, which is cool, and block debuffs. I did try him initially when Hydra came out, and uh, it wasn't great there because we didn't really have the whole tech of mischief tanking or building enough resistance. I think that I could go back to it now and actually find him being quite useful, all right, with Hex being more relevant, landing decreased accuracy on the head of mischief, maybe bringing in increased resistance with like Oella, extending that block debuffs, um, uh, uh, Increased defense, extending the perfect fails. You could do some fun stuff. Uh, so he was uh, eight, but I do think that he was overrated at the same time, right? I think he's a decent champ. I think he's like on the level of like of Walking Tomb Dragon and, and Bivol. He's not as good as Walking Tomb Dragon, I don't think. They're both eight out of ten. Maybe what's going to put him a seven, but you know, a good solid champion, but not god tier in my opinion. Uh, Vlad, the Nightborn, I'd be giving an eight out of ten as well. I think Vlad is a really great champion. Uh, especially since his buff, he's especially good. I think he was very underrated. People were super negative about him, um, saying, oh, he sucks for a Void Legendary. And I can understand where that comes from. But, you know, from a Fusion-type champion, absolutely worth going for. And he's really solid. Sigmund the High Shield, absolutely fantastic support. An amazingly powerful shield. AoE decrease attack with Provoke. Great champion. Really good. Like, you know how strong Mithrala's shield is? He's got almost the same move, just minus the cleanse, and then he does other stuff too. Such an underrated champion. Massive hard carry to so many people. Uh, Rorik, unfortunately, I would give Rorik a 2. I'm really not impressed with Rorik at all. I'm, I'm being pretty harsh here, I know, but I just don't think this champion is good. I don't. I've seen some people do some stuff with him, but nothing particularly useful. I think you could skip this, save the legendary books, and be fine. Mother Cybele, I give an 8 to. Arguably, you could put her up to 9. Does some cool stuff now. Nowadays, of course, for Hydra, she's insane. Um, just a great champ in general, though. Iron Twin, uh, not Iron Twins, the other one, Sand Devil. She can do some really fun stuff with her revive on death there, which obviously didn't exist back then. Neither of these existed back then. Uh, but I still think that, you know, yeah, she was definitely an underrated champ. Again, to be clear here, guys, Sigmund, so underrated. Um, Mother Cybell, so underrated. I do think that Rorik was fairly rated as being pretty bad, to be honest. First off, the Grim, I'd probably be giving a 6 out of 10 to. I think, you know, he's a solid champion, but it's hard to activate the A2 conditional skill. His provoking is quite inconsistent, but he's a decent ally protector. I think he's a 6 out of 10. He's okay. I do think that he was maybe a bit underrated because of that. Herndig, I would probably be giving a 9 to. Um, I marked him here as sort of fairly rated because I was sort of figuring sort of between those uh, 8 or a 9. I think, I think I'd be giving him a 9. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure about this one. Uh, I probably should have put this as underrated, honestly, seeing as he was only considered, I think, to be decent. But anyway, we'll move on. Rule of the Huntmaster, I'd probably give a 7 out of 10. I think a great, solid nuker. He can do some really cool stuff. Um, not essential, but he can absolutely blow up waves and things like that. Pretty interesting. I actually glimpsed it there. Someone here had a rule team, for example, right? Maybe I was wrong. I, I Okay, maybe I'm wrong. I could have sworn. Maybe I've even skimmed past it and not even noticed. Could have sworn I saw a rule team in there. There's a Thea team. And I'm sure Rule could do it too. Maybe I'm blind. Am I blind? I could be. I thought I saw him. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe I saw what I want to see. Maybe I saw Hikatoon and imagined things. I don't know. I thought I saw Rule the Huntmaster in there. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you guys have. But I've, I've definitely seen Rule do some cool stuff anyways, what I'm trying to say. Huh. Maybe I missed that. Uh, I would say Rule the Huntmaster was pretty underrated. People were negative about Hex back then. Brogni is obviously a 10 out of 10. Um, so he was fairly rated god tier champion. Yoshi, I'd be giving an 8 out of 10 too. Super underrated, no question. Astr Here, here's where things get controversial. Astralon, I'd only give a 7 out of 10 too. I feel like this is one of the most overrated fusions of all time. Like, yeah, he's got, he does decent AoE damage. He's fine. Like a decent damage dealer, but nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. Um, just good. Magic affinity. Like, he's, he's good. Uh, and he's got the AoE stun, which is very useful, but you kind of have to choose between the two, doing damage or being good at the crowd control stuff. You kind of have to focus on one of the two. I think I think he's a good, solid, decent champion. I definitely don't think he's god tier. Like, this is not a champion in the same conversation as, like, Brogni or Helicap, or Pythion, those types of champs, uh, and he definitely was considered that. I'd be giving Brago, like, an 8 out of 10. 
as well. I think really good defensive nuker. Brings a lot of defense for your team. Great for a lot of Doom Tower stuff. Solid for like mid-game arena, I think. You know, he, he's good. But I do think that he was overrated. Not a god-tier champion. I actually think with both Totora and Brago, what you have going on here, in my opinion, is an overvaluing on Demon Lord Clan Boss. Um, especially because they're killable teams, right? This is for building a tanky team for Demon Lord, which is just not super relevant to a lot of people. Like, most people are running unkillable teams. And I think that these champs being uh, really, really strong for Demon Lord, let them be much overhyped, to be honest. And yeah, I think that both of them defense nukers. We'll look at that in a second. Uh, I'd be giving a 5 and a 3 to Elagaius. So if I actually zoom out here a little bit, I think both of these were fairly rated as being actually bad. Um, so I actually color-coded this, which hopefully will translate across and look better. There we go. So if we look at this sort of a color-coded version of how these champions are and how they're looking, I think pretty interesting stuff, really. Uh, there's a lot of underrated champs here. There's a few overrated, in my opinion, though we haven't had an overrated champion in over the last year. It's been a long time since an overrated champ. And the overrated champs are honestly, they, they're pretty good. They're good champions. They're just not god tier, in my opinion. Uh, whereas the underrated champs have been pretty fast and furious. Uh, and yeah, this is something like having three they suck champions in a row. is something that hasn't happened again in over a year. Uh, and I think in both cases, all three of these they suck champions underrated. All three right here underrated. We had a string of like five champions that the community hated. I think all but one of them severely underrated, which I think is is kind of absurd. Uh, if we break this down, right? If I break it down, uh, by my reckoning then, this is interesting, right? God tier champions, I think there were eight that were considered to be god tier, four considered to be decent, and 18 considered to suck. Um, so maybe there's some of my bias and how I'm labeling these, right? But nonetheless, I think when you look at that, I think even if you include God tier and decent together, that's 12 versus 18. That the community perception and reaction to fusions and how, how people talk about it in comments from my vibes that I get from people talking about it. 18 versus 12, it's much more negative. That's what a two to three ratio, right? Much more negative about fusions, generally speaking, than they tend to be positive. Um, yeah, which I think is quite interesting. And again, my expectation is that most of these champions, I, I didn't actually do this, but if you went through and you graded it as being like, I don't know, let's say five to eight being decent, uh, nine to 10 being God tier, and and well, maybe five and below being they kind of suck or four and below being they kind of suck maybe. I think I'm, I marked like, yeah, I think I marked Karato as underrated. You can maybe put that as fair rating if you consider five and lower to be bad, which probably makes sense considering I gave a Pixie all five was fairly rated now she's a worse champion she's a better champion now than she was back then to be fair but yeah you could do something like that um yeah interesting if you go to the overrated the fairly rated and the underrated again fairly rated is what we're going for here which is 12 overrated is bad and underrated is bad which is 18 so again 12 to 18 is two to three <laughs> so same thing here two to three of being you know positive versus negative negative being kind of over pushed in my opinion because Again, two to three in terms of being accurate, which is pretty bad. I think it's pretty bad in terms of rating fusions properly. I think the community misses much more than they hit, or at least equal to. Uh, you would think if the community was being helpful, you know, if like if this is a game show, like who wants to be a millionaire? Um, you'd want the advice you're getting to be, you know, hey, what's the percentage you'd want the community to be right? Let's say, let's say at least 80%. Is 80% a reasonable requirement? I'd say 80% is fairly reasonable. Like, yeah, you're right most of the time, but you make a, a good chunk of mistakes as well. That's okay, you know? Maybe even 70% will be generous, but we're way below that. We're way, way off, um, which is, I think, interesting. Also, I think interesting, let me show you this too. So I went through, I did change a couple of the ratings a little bit, but I think my stats here are still mostly correct. There might be a couple of mistakes. I thought with nukers, I thought let's break it down by role, which is what I did. I thought this is interesting with nukers. Very, very negative here. People really don't like the nukers in the fusions. There's only two that are considered to be god tier or decent. Um, those ones, I think, were, uh, yeah, Astralon, I think, and then Herndig were considered to be good. And the rest, all the other nukers considered to suck. In my opinion, only one of those was an like, accurate rating, arguably two. And then the others were all over or underrated, um, which is kind of crazy. For the bombs, uh, interesting enough, the bombs, 
were both considered to be pretty good, actually. Gaius and Nishak, they're both more recent. I think they were both rated pretty well, which I think is interesting. Uh, this is interesting to me again as well. The defensive nukers, Iron Brago and Tatura, in my opinion, were both considered to be god tier and were both uh, overrated. Again, I think that's a Demon Lord clan boss bias coming through that just doesn't really hold up uh, long term when you look at champions. I think they're obviously very, very good champions, but I don't think they're god tier. Uh, whereas other champions that are god tier are going to be extremely useful in multiple areas and carry through. I think these champions are great, but um, I think they're 8 out of 10 champions, but they're not 9 or 10 out of 10. Uh, ally attack. This is Lanatheril, who I do think was underrated. And then for the burners, this Walking Tomb Drang, who I think was fairly rated, which gives us some totals here of um, actually quite even in being good or decent versus sucking. So actually fairly even on that for the damage dealers. Um, but a lot really over or under rating them. Actually very poor in accurately rating the damage dealers, in my opinion. Now, interestingly, over here, let's do the revivers first. This one's fairly straightforward. It's Uko and Pytheon, both god tier and fairly rated and obviously god tier. Um, I was, you know, a bit harsh on Uko at the start because Uko was bugged and Hydra d couldn't strip, couldn't uh, block, block buffs on Head of Wrath. Uh, I couldn't strip buffs off Head of Wrath either, I think. Like he was bugged against Head of Wrath and Hydra. So he's really underwhelming in Hydra, uh, but he's much, much better now. Now that Uko's been fixed, Uko's great for Hydra. So yeah, that changed my opinion, but it was bugged at the time. And people got really mad about that video when I was like, man, he doesn't work as advertised. And people were like, how dare you say this? <laughs> but yeah, and then interesting for the supporters, the supportive type champions, even more drastic than the generic nukers. Now, this is a broad category. We're including champions in here like Oella, we're also including a champion like Morrigan. That's more about speed control. Bivolt, who's kind of a bit of a damage dealer healer. So there's some variety here, right? But interesting to me here that these are perceived very negatively, generally speaking. Almost never are they considered to be even decent champions. They're always, nearly always considered to suck. Um, and in my opinion, actually, they're not so bad in terms of fairly rated. Like it's kind of like okay on fairly rated, but again, much more so, they are, tend to be over or underrated. And the totals here, uh, you can see for the revivers and supportive champions, actually, um, yeah, fairly, pretty bad overall. I think it's the revivers, the clearly OP revivers are making this more even. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the supports are definitely the worst treated out of all of them, pretty much, apart from probably the nukers. That's really the two, the two type of fusion champions that are treated very badly. Fairly traditional nukers, and then supportive champions that don't bring in revives. They're the two that get the worst, the worst end of the stick. There were a few of these guys over here. I don't think I gave them a rating, um, but basically I, I kind of thought that all of these epics were sort of fairly rated with Burgoth and Vildrax being terrible and Huskerl and Nagorio being pretty decent. I think it's fairly obvious with the epics and people didn't really care about it too much. But I think when it comes to fusions, I think this sort of shows it is that people don't really like walking the middle of the road um, they lean much too much towards the extremes. Uh, and in particular, they lean too much towards the extreme of being negative, um, which is maybe, you know, uh, a product of obviously being a YouTube content creator, negative videos do better, no surprise. Uh, and also, uh, you know, negative comments on YouTube as well. Um, negativity just works well with how the online world works at the moment in social media. Um, so perhaps it's no surprise that this is the case. But I think it is still interesting to see that it is the case. And again, by my reckoning, um, it's it leads to quite a bit of an accuracy. So, hey, there are my thoughts. Uh, just to bear in mind that, I, in my opinion, we've had, again, a, a lot of negativity versus recent fusions that, in my opinion, has been way off the mark. So really watch out for it. Uh, again, like I said, I've made plenty of mistakes here as well. It's really difficult to judge a new champion. To be That's something, too, I haven't made clear. It's hard. It is hard to know how good these champions are, and they kind of have to actually get into the hands of real players, and they all get to test them, and then you get to see cool teams coming through. Uh, and sometimes it takes a long time for that to come through. Like, I think with Oella, we're still in that process, you know, a couple of months later that we have not seen this champion's full potential by any means, shape, or form, which is why I've given her a nine. I really think she's that good, but everyone thought that she, or not everyone, but the community perception was overwhelmingly uh, negative, and you can totally skip this fusion. It's bad uh, when she's clearly, in my opinion, she's clearly crazy good. There we go. Look, hope you guys found that interesting. Let me know if you agree or disagree about stuff. Again, I totally might have misremembered some of this, so don't take it 
like 100% serious. I say take it more about 80% serious. We'll go, we're going for the 80%. 80% is what we're shooting for here today. If I was 80% accurate, I'm actually pretty happy with that. And hopefully it's given you a cool insight into what is going on. But yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you found it interesting and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.